Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to show you how to optimize the performance of your 30 series graphics card. This is the 3060 Ti, but these performance tweaks will actually work with any graphics card modern GPU to give you better performance in Windows 10. The first one in this long list of easy tips is the graphics settings and hardware scheduling. So if you press the Windows Start key and search for graphics settings, you'll find hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Turn that to on and you'll improve the performance and reduce latency. You'll notice you can also change the graphics performance settings here to improve the performance based on the app that you're using. So you can set it so that NVIDIA Control Panel can essentially have control of your GPU and get a better performance. So go in that and set it to high performance and save. An easy option, really simple to do. The next one is even simpler. Search for game mode settings within Windows and turn it on. This allows Windows to optimize your PC for playing PC games and give you the best possible experience. You know, this is a number of different changes in Windows that are really easy to do, but they're not set as default. Another one is power settings. Search for power settings, you'll find power and sleep settings. On the right hand side of this window, you'll see additional power settings. Click on that and then you'll find that it's usually set to balanced or power saver mode, whether you're on a laptop or desktop, and that saves energy and balances performance, but it doesn't really give you maximum FPS. So click on ultimate performance or high performance to give your system a performance boost when playing games. Obviously this will use more power generally, so that is something to consider, but it will give you improved FPS and performance when you're playing on your favorite game. Now open the NVIDIA control panel by right clicking on your desktop and clicking NVIDIA control panel, and then navigate to 3D settings to manage the 3D setting. Once you're there, scroll down and find the setting for low latency. You'll find there's a mode for low latency mode here. If you click on the drop down and select ultra, that reduces your latency and maximizes your system performance. And that's a really easy change that you can make that again is set to off as default, but with the latest NVIDIA drivers and graphics cards, it's easy to turn on. You'll also find there's a power management mode a bit further down. Again, that's set to normal. If you click on that, you can set it to prefer maximum performance. Once again, this is obviously going to use more juice. But combining this system with the power settings we've just done in Windows will ensure the best possible results from your GPU. All these settings are off by default, and so you're not making the most of your graphics card when you've just installed it, so it's worth doing. Now, if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor, it's worth going in and setting up G-Sync as well. This will ensure that your monitor is giving you the best possible frames and the smoothest possible experience. Another thing of note is that if you have a fast refresh screen, for example, I'm running this ROG screen at the moment, which is 360 hertz refresh rate as standard. You might want to go into the NVIDIA settings on this and change the refresh rate, because as default, it was set to 144 hertz. But with a DisplayPort cable, I can get 360 hertz. You can do a similar thing by right-clicking on the desktop and clicking Display Settings. And then under this, at the bottom, you'll find Advanced Display Settings, and you'll see there's an option for refresh rate here. Once again, that was not set to 360 hertz as default, which means you're not making the most of the screen. So even if you're getting really high FPS, you're not hitting that as you should be. Another thing you can do is within GeForce Experience, there are a number of settings you can change. So if you have GeForce Experience installed, which I'd highly recommend you do, if you go into the Settings cog, you'll find Enable Experimental Features. Tick this and that will update your GeForce experience to give you access to other settings. With the latest drivers installed, you can do a number of cool things. One of the easiest things to do is to ensure that your games are automatically optimized when you add them. So NVIDIA will optimize your games, set the visuals to the best performance settings to give you the best possible experience. And you can do that quite easily. Now, when you press Alt and Z, you will find that there is a performance monitoring system now with the experimental features enabled and you can see there's a performance tuning option. This is easy to access and you can basically enable automatic tuning. This gives Nvidia the power to then overclock automatically your graphics card using its own intelligent testing system. This means that you can overclock without actually having to worry about voltages and all that other things manual adjustment, something historically that was quite intimidating for people that don't know what they're doing. 
and could potentially cause problems to your system. But with NVIDIA's automatic tuning, obviously they know what they're doing in terms of optimizing your particular graphics card for the best possible experience. It will run a test and it will do a scan and it will then apply the best possible results. Unfortunately, I'm having a bit of a problem with mine at the moment because of the drivers, but hopefully you won't have an issue and that will work really well. Another thing that you'll do is you'll see that you can get a performance overlay. So on the right hand side, there's an overlay now which you can access with Alt and R. Once again, you need the experimental features enabled to do this, but this will then give you access to the GPU utilization, your current clock speeds, temperatures, fan speeds, and your FPS. So you can monitor the differences that all these changes have made inside a game. So if you want to try this before you get started, all the other changes I recommended, and then afterwards see the difference in it, then you can do that. The next thing to do is MSI's Afterburner. This is a free bit of software that's highly thought of, and you can use this to automatically overclock as well. So open up this software once you've downloaded it, open the settings and tick Unlock Voltage Control and Unlock Voltage Monitoring. You'll then need to restart Afterburner. And within that, you can then adjust a couple of things. Again, this is automatic, so you don't need to worry about needing to know all the different details and how to manage it. But to do this, and I'm going to link in the description to a blog article written by MSI about how to do it, just so you, in case you're worried if I've missed something in this video or you want more in-depth detail about it, you can read up on it. But essentially what you need to do is adjust the core voltage, and you can see that on the left, and basically put that all the way up to maximum and the maximum power limit as well. So just adjust those two sliders, and that's a pretty simple thing to do. And then on the right, on the left hand side, you'll then see there's a, a little magnifying glass and a C next to it. It's basically overclocking scanning. So once you do that, open that up, click scan, and that will automatically scan your system. This is quite similar to the NVIDIA automatic performance tuning that we just did with NVIDIA GeForce Experience. And so you can run that scan, then MSI Afterburner will work out how to get more juice out of your graphics card without causing your system to fall over and then it will apply those settings. Again, I had problems with mine, but hopefully you won't have this issue that I've got here with a scan failure. That's due to the latest NVIDIA drivers. For some reason, there's a problem there, but a nice, simple way of doing it. Another thing you can do is in some games, and they're not all supported, but you will find supporting settings for NVIDIA Reflex. So you can see in Overwatch here, you can see Reflex enabled plus boost and there's also dlss settings you can change to be performance focused only some games support it but it's worth going into your graphics settings and looking for nvidia reflex and dlss if you change those you might find a reduction in system latency and an improvement in graphical performance in terms of the fps you're getting as well another thing that i'm going to do shortly another video i'm going to do is on nvidia's reflex latency analyzer which is a system which basically tracks the clicks from your mouse through the system to then the output and the muzzle flash from your weapon and here you can see a bit of a testing in that where the muzzle flash is being monitored you know there's a box on the left hand side of the screen a white box that flashes every time i fire my gun that system is used to monitor how the reaction goes from the mouse to the screen it's a very clever system that uses a specific set of G-Sync compatible monitors with low latency management. And then you can track the management and then you can track the latency in the overlay. And you can see that on the right hand side, you can see I've got a 1.1 millisecond mouse latency on the system, but it also gives you an overall system latency. And all this is to reduce latency and improve your performance. Watch out for that video coming soon, as well as one separately on the 3060 Ti. Hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the description for other information and links, and let me know if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.